Hey, sinner. Sit back and relax. I'll take you to your next nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> this is rather embarrassing. I'm completely taken aback by you. And if I may be so bold, my dear, your beauty is truly, truly breathtaking. It simply takes every fiber of my being to control myself and try not to stare. Please, do sit down. Hmm, I'm afraid we don't have much. I would rather offer you a better seat. However, me and Milo, we don't really fancy too many luxuries in our lives. The most luxurious item you could find in this manor would probably be this grand piano right here. Yes. These luxurious items, they don't appeal to me. All the luxuries in the world are all so temporary. Items that fade away with time. Me and Milo over here, we both crave a more eternal form of pleasure. Yes, an example would be music. Music can be replayed over and over, as long as one knows how to play it. In a sense, music is forever. <laughs> My apologies. I just recalled something that made me laugh. Yes. The tune that you were just listening to was composed by an old friend of mine. And just like everything else, he was also temporary. Sometimes I wonder, perhaps the most beautiful of treasures are the ones you can't keep forever. Don't you think so? Ah, yes. At this point in time, you must be wondering, why on earth are you here, sitting blackly in the middle of a 
of strangers study. You must have listened to my tune while you were walking outside, and suddenly felt the urge to come inside. No matter how hard you try, you could never look away. You could never turn around. Something was calling you, wasn't it? Yes. I shall be frank with you, my dear. I haven't been entirely honest with you. And it's simply unfair for you. So, here is the truth. You are under my hypnosis. You have been. Ever since you've listened to my first few notes. It's a simple trick that I developed. And as you might have guessed, I'm not human. And my little companion, Milo, here, he's not a cat. Yes, he's something much, much more sinister than anything you could ever imagine. But fortunately for the both of us, He's in a rather good mood today. Hmm. But again, now that you think about it, to say that we're both in luck will be a slight inaccuracy. After all, my dear, you are simply out of luck. I am a vampire, and unfortunately for you, my dear, you are tonight's meal. And my dear, you simply smell so divine. Just like how you humans kill animals, kill other living beings, and turn them to food, we vampires, we turn to you for sustenance. I assure you, my dear, there is no need to be afraid. After all, death is not terrifying. It's like falling asleep, falling into a deep slumber. Don't worry, my dear. I shall release you from this pain shall release you from this pain known as life. And I promise you, my dear, that you shall pass on gently, without pain. Shh. It's all right. It's all right. There's nothing to 
fear close your eyes and start your cry. I'm here, my sweetheart, right by your side. So come hold my hand till death do us part. It seems fate has other plans for you, and it appears that I won't be holding my end of the bargain. Your death will not be swift. In fact, your suffering has only just begun. yourself needs to carry a smile whenever possible. After all, one looks best with a smile on their face. But then again, I should try to emphasize with your current situation. You haven't eaten over 50 days. And more importantly, you haven't drank anything at all. Not even a single drop of blood. Why, I'm surprised you still have the energy to even glare at me like that. Surely you must be famished. And most of all, you must be thirsty. Would you care for a little sip? Come, my dear. Just one little sip. I assure you, you feel like a million bucks after. No. Oh. You're such terrible manners, darling. Didn't your mother ever taught you not to waste food? Hmm. Look at the mess that you've made here. Such a waste. Ah. Why do you reject your instincts so much, darling? 
your whole body craves this blood that's all over the floor. I can tell it. Your mouth is full of saliva. Your body is quaking and aching. It desperately needs to quench that thirst. Why do you resist so much? Is it your humanity? Are you trying to preserve what a little humanity you have inside you? Well, let me tell you this. You are no longer human. Whatever humanity you had left inside of you, it no longer exists. Oh, you know it to be true, my dear. Just feel. Put your hands on top of your chest. Your new heightened senses could feel it. There's nothing there. Your heart does not beat anymore. The blood that runs through your veins are no more. Heat no longer comes from your body. Your body is as cold as a corpse. Because that's what we are. We are no longer part of the living. We no longer have a soul. We are vampires. The sooner you realize, the better. Now this is actually quite the record. Only a few vampires have lasted this long without blood. Oh, and I tell you, it's never pretty when they last this long. Soon, your instincts will take over your brain. All the logic and reason you have, all that resistance will simply crumble away. You'll be nothing but a blood-sucking machine very soon. Bring him in. Where, where the fuck am I? Oh, fuck. Hey, you. What the hell is this place? Now quiet down. I will give you a choice. Drink every single drop of the blood that you spilled. Right now. Or simply wait for your instincts to kick in. And by that time, you'll be drinking straight from this poor bystander's neck. You choose. Very well. <laughs> Looks like you want to do this the fun way. I'll leave you to it. You may now speak. Ugh. You're a vampire. Wait. 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 Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Hey, hey, lady. Where is this place? Why, why are there vampires all over this place? Oh, shit. You're a vampire. 
a vampire too much. Get the fuck away. Get the fuck away from me. Don't you come anywhere near me. You hear me? You fucking monster. Fuck. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Fuck. 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 <laughs> oh, yes. Remember that feeling. Remember the taste of your first fresh blood. Yes, you might have noticed. Once a vampire devours their prey, all their memories from blood comes to you. So rejoice, this man now lives forever within you, within your memories. Congratulations, you have finally become a real vampire. You're a vampire too much. Don't you come anywhere near me. Hear me? You fucking monster. I'll, I'll be better. I'll be better, I promise. <laughs> It's quite all right. I've moved you to somewhere more comfortable. You're in the main suite right now. Yes, it seems your first time absorbing human blood took a toll on your body. Well, to be fair, you did held your hunger for over 50 days. Hmm. It's quite a miracle you survived. You didn't quite have the energy to endure the memories. Yes, my dear, did you forget? <sighs> Vampires consume blood. But not only blood. With every person we consume, we also take 
with them their memories. As I said before, when we consume humans, they too live within us. They become immortal with us. So, fret not. You did not kill anyone, for they are still alive within yourself. It's all right, my dear. Just focus on resting for now. Shh. Close your eyes. That's it. I'll help you get through this. The first one is always the nastiest. Their memories are still very, very strong. <laughs> you feel their every desire. Their deepest, darkest ones. You feel their happiness, their joy. And you feel their fears too. It's all right. It'll be over very soon. Like dreams and nightmares. And once you wake up, you'll feel completely new and completely fresh. That's it. I'll be reading you some bedtime stories. I don't know about you, but I personally find it much more calming when there's another voice beside me when I fall asleep. Hopefully, my voice can help you get through this. All right. The story is called The Frog Prince, otherwise known as The Princess and the Frog. Once upon a time, there was a princess. Many a suitor came to the palace to win her hand in marriage. But it seemed to the princess that each one of them looked at her without really seeing her at all. They act like there's nothing more to a princess than her fine crown and royal dresses, she said to herself with a frown. One afternoon, after one of these visits, the princess thought, Sometimes I wish I were little again. She found her favorite ball from childhood, the one that sparkled when she threw it up high to the sun. She took the ball to the palace yard and threw it higher and higher. One time, she threw it extra high, and when she ran to catch the ball, she tripped on a tree stump. The ball fell and plopped right down into the royal well. She raced over to fetch her ball before it dropped too far, but by the time she got there, she could no longer see it in the water. Oh no, she moaned. This is terrible. Just then, a small green frog poked its head above the water. Maybe I can help you, said the frog. Yes, said the princess. Please get my ball. No problem, said the frog. But first, there's something I must ask of you. What do you mean, said the princess. It's for you to spend time with me today, said the frog. I'm not sure I know what that means, said the princess. 
just spend time with me today, repeated the frog. All right then, fine, said the princess. Now please, get my ball. I'm on it, said the frog. He dived deep into the well. A few moments later, up he came with a ball, held high in one hand. Thank you, said the princess, taking it from him. She turned to go. Wait a minute, said the frog. You promised to spend time with me today. I already did, she said with a shrug, and the princess walked back to the palace. That night at dinner with her family and the royal advisers, there was a knock on the door. The servant opened the door and saw no one there. The frog, standing down low, cleared his throat. The princess promised me to spend time with me today, said the frog in as loud a voice as he could. So here I am. Daughter, said the king from far end of the table, did you promise to spend time with this frog as he claims? Sort of, said the princess. After a pause, she added, Oh, very well, come on in. The servants quickly set a new place setting for the frog, and he hopped over to the royal dining table. Conversation turned to a topic of concern in the kingdom. None of the royal advisers knew what to do. Father, if I may, said the princess, perhaps we could... Stop, said the king, cutting her off. I have enough advisers, believe me. If I may, said the frog, and it was the first time he had spoken at the table. There is more to a princess than her fine crown and royal dresses. The princess stared at the frog. How could this little frog, more than anyone else, understand such a thing? After dinner, the frog bowed to the princess. He said, You have done what you said you would do. I suppose it's time now for me to go. No, wait, said the princess. It's not that late. How about a walk in the garden? The frog was delighted. The two of them walked in the royal garden, the frog hopping along the stone wall so he and the princess were at the same level and could talk easily. They laughed about many things. Later, when the sun set, they admired the deep rosy reds it casted in the sky. The princess said, You know, being with you tonight was a lot more fun than I thought. I had a very good time, too, said the frog. Who knew, said the princess with a laugh. She leaned over and kissed the frog lightly on his cheek. At once, there was a puff of clouds and smoke. The small green frog had changed into a young prince. The princess jumped back in surprise. The prince quickly told her not to worry, that all was well. Years before, an evil witch had put a spell on him that he must stay a frog until he was kissed by a princess. The witch had laughed an evil laugh, saying, Like that will ever happen. But it did. Now the prince and the princess could get to know each other better. Years later, after they were married, they had a beautiful setting made for the ball and placed it on their royal dining table. And when the sunlight shone in through the palace windows, the ball sparkled for all to see. The end. Was that story familiar to you, my dear? I took it from one of your memories. Remember the time when I drank your blood? A part of your memories flowed through me. You had quite the life. A beautiful one. And I took it away from you. I 
can't tell you why right now. But in time, you'll understand. Shh. Good night, my dear. Sweet. Has it been since your stay here? Hmm. hmm. Three, maybe four months. <laughs> I'm sorry. It gets difficult to keep track of the days, especially in this place. <laughs> A place devoid of light. Now, my dear, why don't we check up on you? Mm-hmm, yes. <sighs> Just as I suspected. Your recent diet has not been doing well for you. You've been consuming rats again, haven't you, my dear? <laughs> well, there's no need to hide it. I can see it from the way you look. You grow more animal-like by the day. I think I saw you walking on all fours the other day. You do understand that whenever we consume blood, we take the memories and the experiences of what we consume. In a way, we are what we eat. The more you consume rats, the more you turn into one. Likewise, the more you consume humans, the more you will turn into one. In a way, consuming humans is our way of preserving our humanity. Isn't that what you want, my dear? To preserve your humanity, your consciousness, your identity. Perhaps that's something you have to ask yourself right now. What are you? What would you like to be? Would you rather be a human? Or would you rather be a rat? It's time for you to choose. I have here, in this cup, the blood of a human. And, in this other cup, the blood of a rat. It's time for you to choose properly. Once you choose, I will not question you anymore. I'll let you do whatever you want. 
after all, your life is still yours to do as you please. So, what will it be? Does my blood taste, my dear? <laughs> Is it difficult to swallow? <laughs> You're a million years too early to start drinking my blood. <sighs> can hear them, can't you? <sighs> All those voices screaming in agony. <laughs> those other voices I've consumed. And I've consumed millions. <sighs> Fighting you was pointless, my dear. You can't kill me. And I won't kill you. If you reject me this much, then I'll let you have your freedom. You're free to go wherever you want. Do whatever you want. Mingle with whoever you want. I won't stop you. But I know you. You'll never have the guts to face the light and end your life. Before long, you'll simply return to me. You'll see soon enough. I am the only one you can be with. I'm the only one who understands you completely. After all, I am your destiny, as you are mine. The more 
you run from destiny, the closer you'll get to it. Until then, have fun with your life. I'll be seeing you soon enough.